Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're gonna be working on this interesting killer calculus question from Korean SAT man, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. This is only the summary of all the conditions of the question. So f of x is an increasing differentiable function, and g of x is an inverse function of f of x, and f of one is equal to one, integral from one to two, f of x dx is five over four and g of 2x is 2 times f of x for all real value of x that is greater than or equal to 1. And the question said, integral from 1 to 8 of x times f prime of x dx is p over q. The question said p and q are relative prime. What's the value of p plus q? So using those conditions first, we have f of 1 is equal to 1. That also means g of 1 should then be equal to 1, 2, because question said g of x is an inverse function of f of x. And if you plug it in the value, right, then g of 2, since using g of 2x is 2 times f of x, then g of 2, meaning plug it in 1 to the x, right, then g of 2 is the same as 2 times f of 1. This is just equal to 2. And this also means f of 2 is equal to 2. So if you plug it in 2 to the x, right, then we have g of 4. g of 4 is now then 2 times f of 2. This is equal to 4. And if you plug it in 4 to the x, then we have g of 8. This is 2 times f of 4. This is also equal to 8. Okay, then since f of 1 is equal to 1, g of 1 is equal to 1, g of 2 is equal to 2, f of 2 should then be equal to 2. G of 4 is equal to 4, that means f of 4 is equal to 4. G of 8 is equal to 8, that means f of 8 is equal to 8. So we have now that the reference function of y is equal to x. This is the reference function. Okay, then let's think about this integral. So the question is asking you about integral from 1 to 8 and of x times f prime of x. And we have dx. Okay, then using integration by parts, this is the same as then x times f of x from 1 to 8. Okay. And then that minus integral from 1 to 8 of f of x dx. About this term. So this term is going to be the same as 8 times f of 8. And then minus 1. And then we already know 8 times f of 8 is equal to 64 then. 8 times 8, right? So this is then the same as 64 minus 1. That will give you 63. So the first term is now is equal to 63. All we need to do is to analyze this integral. Integral from 1 to 8, f of x dx, right? But then again, this integral from 1 to 8 of f of x and dx. Okay, then using those numbers, like 1, 2, 4, 8, this is going to be the same as integral from 1 to 2 of f of x dx, plus integral from 2 to 4 f of x dx, plus integral from 4 to 8 of f of x dx. Okay, so we can call this integral as integral number 1 that we already have the value of this. Question already gave you as 5 over 4, right? So integral number 1 is now 5 over 4 as the given. And let me call this as integral number 2 and call this as integral number 3. So let's get the value of integral of 2 and 3, right? And let me just make a graph of it. X axis and y axis. And since we have the reference function of y is equal to x, okay, let's say this is y is equal to x, right? And then we do have some reference point when x is equal to 1, and when x is equal to 2, and when x is equal to 4, when x is equal to 8. Okay. Uh, so y is equal to 1, the corresponding y value is 2 corresponding y value as 4. And lastly, corresponding y value has to be 8. Okay, 
Okay, the first, let's focus on this integral number one as given from the question. Question said, integral from one to two of f of x, dx is five over four. That means whatever your f of x is, when x is between one and two, the area that is under the curve and above this x-axis has to be five over four. But then again, going back to this graph, the area of this trapezoid, when x is between one and two, the area of the trapezoid is now three over two. And three over two is greater than five over four, which means your f of x has to be the curve and your curve should be looking just like this. So that the area that is under this graph and above the x-axis, five over four, that is less than the area of the trapezoid, right? So this is the only way for us to have the f of x as the nice curve. So that confirms that your f of x is a curve. So that f of two is equal to two, f of four is equal to four, f of eight is equal to eight. So the only way that we can have nice curve is your f of x should be looking just like this. Okay, this is your f of x. Okay, that looks like integral from one to eight of f of x dx has to be the area that is under this curve and then above this x-axis, right? So we have three areas to think about. Area number one. And area number two. And area number three. We already know area number one, five over four, as given from the question. For area number two, let me use this condition. G of 2x is 2 times f of x, right? So use G of 2x is 2 times f of x. Okay, so using this, let's think about integral uh, from 2 to 4 of f of x and dx. Using this, this is going to be the same as integral from 1 to 2 of G of 2x and dx. Okay, so then since we have g of 2x is 2 times f of x, right? So we can also rewrite this as pulling 2 out of integral from 1 to 2 of f of x dx. Then we already know the value of this integral from 1 to 2 f of x dx as 5 over 4. So this is going to be the same as 5 over 2. Okay. So 5 over 2 is the value of integral from 1 to 2 of g of 2x dx. So we can say integral from 1 to 2 of g of 2x dx is the same as 5 over 2. Time to use u substitution, right? So if you're calling u as uh, 2x, that means your du is 2 times dx. That means your dx is du over 2. So using this, the integral has to be done the same as pulling 1 over 2 out of integral from 2 to 4. Because if you plug it in 1 to the x, then u is equal to 2. Plug it in 2 to the x, then the upper bound has to be 4, of g of u, du. And this is just going to be the same as 5 over 2. So that's why integral from 2 to 4 of g of u, du, this is just equal to 5. So that is why, let's think about the area of number two, right? So integral from two to four of g of u du. Make sure g of x or g of u is the inverse function of f of x or f of u, right? So knowing that we have now area number two, this area. This area could be calculated first to know how area of the square is now 16. So first, the area of this square is 16. Four times four is equal to 16 minus this little squares area, two times two is equal to four. So 12 has to be the area of this, right? But then again, we do have this integral from two to four of g of u du, which is the inverse function of the f, right? So five has to be the area of this. So this area is representing five. But then again, we already know this area has to be 12. And then we are looking for the area number 2. So 12 minus 5, which is 7. 7 has to be the area number 2.
And we can do the same to get the area of number three, right? So for area number three, we are looking for integral from four to eight of f of x dx. We'll do the same thing. This is the same as integral from two to four of g of two x, and then we have dx, right? Same u substitution, then we'll end up with two times integral from two to four of f of x dx. It is then going to be the same as 2 times 7, that is 14. Okay, then we should think about this integral from 4 to 8 of g of u, du. Same u substitution, right? This value has to be done the same as 2 times 14, which is 28. And since, once again, g of u is an inverse of f, right? So 28 has to be now this area. This is the area for 28. But make sure we're looking for the area of number 3, right? So we can just do the same. So the area of the square, 8 by 8, that is now 64. And then the area of this 4 by 4 square, that is 16. So if you subtract this, then you end up with 48, right? So 48 has to be now this area. But then again, we're looking for area number 3. We can subtract 28 from 48. We have 20, which means this area number 3 has to be then 20. So now we have everything, right? So we are looking for 63 minus sum of integral number 1 to 3. So what we need is now 63 minus integral number 1 plus integral number 2 plus integral number 3. And then integral number 1 was 5 over 4. Integral number 2 is 7, and integral number 3 is now 20, right? So just make a calculation, 63 minus 5 over 4 plus 7 plus 20. This is then going to be the same as 139 over 4. So the question said P and Q are relative prime, and then 139 and 4 are relative prime. So that's why P is 139. And then Q is now 4, so we need to add them up. So P plus Q is now then 4, 143. So 143 was the answer for this question. Okay, so pretty interesting killer question from Korean SAT math. How amazing.